Hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a PhD student at the Université Libre de Bruxelles, and um, I'm interested in information processing during sleep. Yeah, hello. So I am Philippe. So as you deduce, I am the promoter of uh, Rebecca. And actually, we called our university the Université Libre de Bruxelles in French, because otherwise there is a confusion with our Flemish counterpart. And so that mm -hmm. makes the association uh, different, but so, and I am a professor at, uh, at the Faculty of Psychological Sciences. Thank you both. Uh, so now we just wanted to dive a little bit into this um, publication that was recently um, released. So maybe Rebecca, you could tell us a bit about um, the paper, um, what really inspired the need to research it? Why was this um, undertaken, this research study? Sure. Um, so just to give a little bit of background, uh, whenever we listen to, to musical rhythms, um, we abstract some high level pro properties such as uh, the meter that um, emerges when we are uh, listening to these periodical sequences of sounds. And uh, for instance, this uh, meter perception can be manifested behaviorally as the movement of the head when we are listening to the music or tapping of the fingers or, or the foot. And these responses to the meter can also be reflected at the neural level. And this can be studied uh, with a, uh, a technique called uh, EEG frequency tagging, where we can see that um, brain responses uh, are prominent in the frequencies that correspond to the, to the exact uh, frequencies of the envelope of the of the sounds of the rhythm that we are presenting. So um, uh, we use this technique for this study, and in collaboration with our co-authors uh, Sylvie Nosaradan and Thomas Lenk, we decided to study um, uh, perception of meter during sleep. And this is building up on on research on uh, meter perception during wakefulness. So what our collaborators have done is to present uh, simple musical uh, rhythms and study these frequency tag responses. And what they have observed is that um, when listening to these uh, uh, rhythms, the responses at the meter uh, frequencies are uh, more prominent in comparison to EEG responses at frequencies that are also contained in the envelope of the rhythms, but are not relevant for meter perception. So using this, uh, this method, we, we wanted to study these responses during uh, all sleep stages. So non-REM stages two and three and uh, REM sleep. The findings or the conclusions that came out of this research, would you consider them surprising or was it pretty much in line with your expectation going into this research? Yeah, so on the one hand, uh, we, we confirmed what was previously found during wakefulness, that responses to, to these rhythmic sequences are enhanced at meter frequencies. And this is regardless of uh, the type of rhythm. So in this experiment, we used two uh, different rhythms. Uh, one rhythm was a, a regular one and the other one was irregular. They had the same acoustic properties, but the arrangement of, of the sounds elicited um, a meter that would rely uh, less or more in the presentation of the acoustic events. So this means that in the regular rhythm, the perception of meter follows some acoustic cues. Mm -hmm. And in the irregular rhythm, these cues are less um, prominent. So, so the meter perception is um, thought to be more endogenously generated, making this rhythm more complex. And to get back to your question, uh, what we found was that these responses are present during wake wakefulness. And uh, during sleep, uh, we thought that there would be like an overall reduction on, on the perception of, of this meter. And uh, yeah, so we, 
we could not find these uh, frequency tag responses to the meter during non-REM sleep stages two and three. But um, surprisingly, uh, we found that these responses reemerged at least partially during REM sleep. So um, this, I think this was an interesting finding. Um, what does that mean in terms of real life application of this um, information or this finding that is so interesting when you when you explain it, but how does that impact us on a day to day level? So our study adds information to the question of what are the perceptual capabilities um, of the sleeping brain and uh, given these capabilities. Uh, we can also ask the question of what other cognitive processes may take place during sleep or may not take place during sleep. And one example could be uh, if we can learn uh, during sleep and uh, for example, learning of, of new associations or extracting information from uh, long streams of input such as speech or music. And I think our study adds uh, information on, on this on this important question. For me, that's definitely interesting to know if that is even really possible to learn while still sleeping, you know? Um, exactly. I, th I think there's always, not always, but um, previously, or when I was in school, the trend was to um, have the presentation or lecture and you listen to it um, while you sleep. So it would be playing even though you're asleep and the assumption was the knowledge would be processed and retained uh, during that time. So even without realizing the, the whole science behind it years ago, I think this was very popular when I was in school. And uh, yeah. probably the best moment to study is wakefulness. And uh, <laughs> it is also good to have a good night's sleep before your exam. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, even if we can still process certain uh, information during sleep, probably uh, this capacity is limited. And well, I would also like to point out that I think that there's also a difference between uh, being exposed to new material during sleep mm -hmm. as compared to, to presenting some cues during sleep that have been already associated during, during wakefulness. But still, I believe that the best moment to to uh, train your memory, for example, Agreed. is uh, during wakefulness. Definitely. Um, but then just to point out one final thing, and I guess you somewhat touched on it a while ago, um, when going through the publication in the abstract, it started with a bold statement saying, uh, the extent of high level perceptual processing during sleep remains controversial. Um, could you maybe touch on a few points as to why? It's, it's, you stated it's controversial. Yeah, so it could be controversial because, um, so there have been different findings. Um, on, on one hand, uh, we see that responses to uh, repetitive stimulation can, can decrease uh, during sleep, but the brain still responds differentially to, um, to, to, stimuli, to stimuli depending on, on the relevance or their salience. So whenever you present some names to the participant and within these names, the own name of the participant, the, the, the brain responds uh, differently to, to the proper name than other names. And this is the case also for familiar versus unfamiliar voices. And there are other studies that um, have presented like longer streams of speech and see that um, that there's no uh, there's no response at the level of uh, higher order uh, linguistic uh, of the linguistic hierarchy. So there are responses only to the syllables, for example, but not the words or the phrases. And in a previous study from from our lab. Um, uh, the capacity to extract statistical uh, regularities within a stream of, of tones was also studied during sleep and, and it was found that uh, there were no responses to this uh, more complex uh, grouping of events. So that's why uh, the statement is that it's controversial, controversial probably, well, or due to the, 
different findings. With regard to the last uh, question, it is controversial also mm -hmm. because some people claim that you can learn much more sophisticated information during sleep, but it remains debated uh, according to the different methods and finding and alternative interpretation. What we are sure is that we still process information minimally during sleep, that is if you, you can continue to hear sound, to react to it, uh, to be simple. But what our findings are, and they are consistent with other uh, findings, is that, okay, your ability to process this information remain quite limited. You will not create very sophisticated association. So that was a bit the case in what we see here. You can, during rapid eye sleep, still perceive a rhythm that is quite simple, but if it is uh, much complicated, then you start losing this ability. And during non-REM sleep, it's even less th than that. And so for us, it means that, okay, sleep is a state where, where you are sleeping, uh, where you have to restore your function. So it's good that you can use that also for some cognitive function, for instance, consolidation, like Rebecca explained, and actually it is the, the heart of his of her uh, research to study that uh, how during sleep we continue processing information learned during wakefulness and how we can stimulate during sleep. Here it's a very different question. It's can we learn something totally new and sophisticated during, uh, wake, during sleep? Which is a, a question, as you say, it was popular and it's still popular. You can go and find advert on Facebook for that but it's not based on real science currently. So that's really important. I, as a scientist, I strongly believe that we should show things that work, but also that do not work because it's important to keep in the, in the right limit of what uh, we are able to do. And as uh, Rebecca rightly pointed to, the best time to learn is still wakefulness. It's a pity for the student, I know that, but it's, it's the way it is. <laughs> so that's a bit the... So for, for us, what was unique about the topic is that it's, there is not that much study really looking at can you learn something new during sleep. We know that we can react to things during sleep. It's a bit different than learning something. There has been some learning has been evidence, but it's only very ele elementary uh, conditioning, stuff like that, which is good already. You can play with that. But I agree. And I will not use start using that to, to try to have people learn new uh, their courses during sleep. It will not work very well, probably. You mentioned, um, Philippe, that not much study has been done on this. So then I assume, Rebecca, that there is still, even after this publication, plans to still further study along these lines and um, do additional or more in-depth uh, research. It, it would be nice, uh, but uh, also, as Philip pointed out, uh, I'm, I'm also interested in answering uh, other questions that are related to how uh, presenting uh, material, so for example, words or sounds associated to a previous learning, um, uh, influences uh, memory consolidation okay. on the next day. So, okay. It's on the same lines, but yeah, it, I think it's a very interesting uh, topic. Well, so, sorry, it's still information processing during C, but there more in something that is more currently established. That is the fact that we continue processing information that has been learned uh, during sleep to consolidate it. It's it's uh, something on top of what happens during wakefulness. It's not exclusive, of course, but that's. Uh, and that's really something we are really interested in, especially during rapid eye sleep, because there uh, it's not yet very well evidence whether it's possible to stimulate during REM sleep and what effect it has. Thank you, thank you again both for um, agreeing to speak to me. Yeah. Then I hope soon we'll be able to read another yeah. publication on this topic. <laughs>